evening, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Come on in, come on in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as you come in. Good evening, Brother Banks. <laughs> good evening, Brother Davis, Sister Michelle. Brother Larry Williams. Good evening. Good evening. We're early. <laughs> if you're not early, you're late. You're late. <laughs> Bishop Flowers. Oh, yes. Good evening, everyone. We are early tonight. No, we on time. We was a little early. Well, we come on at 7. Yes. All right. It's not even 7 yet. It's not? Nope. See? It's 7 now. Now it's 7. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. All right. 7,000 Club. God bless you tonight. God bless one and all. We thank God for you. And this is a night that will challenge the order that is now and the order what it should be uh, in the context of the role of a man and the role of a woman. And so we need to redefine uh, the roles. Uh, and so tonight, the subject is for men only <laughs> for men only and the scripture I like to use and then we're going to get into the discussion we have a young lady here that is a modern young lady but yet she is traditional as far as lining up with scripture All what are right. you talking about I'm talking about you. Me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not modern. Yeah. Well, anyway, traditional. Yes. Biblically traditional. Mm -hmm. See, she didn't want to be identified with uh, the nuance of uh, this new generation. I'm a spicy and she's, traditional. All right, spicy, <laughs> traditional, hot tamale. <laughs> Let me read the scripture here. Uh, Numbers, the 11th chapter, and the 16th verse to the 17th verse. Now, Moses. He is uh, given the responsibility to lead God's people, but the, the burden was too much. So God said to Moses, let's read the 16th verse, And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel. Men, no women, but Men, the Lord, maximum authority, said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, those that's in the priesthood, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. 
and I will come down. This is, this is the Lord talking. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take the spirit which is upon thee, talking about Moses, and I will put it upon them, the elders, the 70 men. I will put it upon them, men only, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone. These 70 men were chosen from the elders of Israel. No women, no women, men only. <laughs> now watch this now. We have the New Testament. Of course, we know Jesus had 12 disciples, 12, no women. You know, you had women, Paul said, remember those women that labored with us. It is a with us situation. Paraclete, working alongside to help. That's why the woman was created to be a helpmeet. Women were created by God because it was not good for a man to be alone. So he created the woman. And the woman's supposed to be a helper meet, suitable, compatible companion. That's it. I mean, you were born to be a helper meet and to be a crown to your husband. And that crown means to encircle him and bring him to his highest level. See, the right woman will enhance your life, but the wrong one will diminish your life. And so God is a giver of good gifts, and he that findeth a wife, not just a woman, but a wife, findeth a good thing, and she brings favor. <laughs> But now, in this day and time, uh, the feminist movement, the feminist movement have really caused confusion as far as the role defined for women. And it is tough to deal with the reality, but let me let me say this: that First Timothy. Now I know people. We tired. Well, we tired of you women trying to be men, and they just jumping all over. Listen, God jumped all over you, not us. The Word says. Now, if you're going to be obedient, which is worship, a state of obedience. You don't have to be in church raising your hand and running around the church and jumping up and down and dancing and having a good time. You think that's worship. But worship is proskuneo. It is a state of obedience. So if you're not obedient to the word, you're not in worship. Matter of fact, you're telling God you know more than God. It's an affront. It is an affront for you to take God's word and twist it and make it suitable for your desire, which is your stomach, your belly, which is the, the belly means desire, like the hen on the barnyard. She desired to be like a rooster. And she causes confusion. All you preaching women, you cause confusion like a hen on the barnyard trying to crow like a rooster. Uh, uh. And when the, the <laughs> farmer <laughs> hears that sound, the farmer grabs the hen and wrings her neck. I've seen that with my own eyes. 
I was on the phone with my grandfather in South Carolina, and he heard a hen saying, Arr! she's trying to crow. Arr! And my grandfather said, oh, she got to go. See, because she will artificially stimulate other hens. Mm -hmm. She will jump on other, that's a lesbian spirit in that hen. <laughs> yes, cock a doodle do, and that makes the, the <laughs> that causes the rooster to be obsolete. Cause once that happens, the rooster is out of business. Cause those other hens will be confused and refuse to let the rooster have a relationship so that they can have more eggs and biddies and what have you. So Colonel Front Colonel Saunders would be upset with that hen. Not Colonel Sanders. What is it? Yeah, the chicken man. Oh, yeah, oh. he need he needs the hen to bring forth new biddies. All right. Mm -hmm. So confusion. Now we got confusion in the earth as well as the church. Now, let me deal with the church, then we're going to get into some other things that... Uh, Society. Men, yeah, men only. Watch this. In First Timothy, the second chapter. Now, Paul, God gave Paul the liturgical order of the church. 13 different books that God used Paul, the man that was caught up into the third heavens, the man that heard the voice of God, the man that heard the voice of Jesus, and he said he was an eyewitness of Jesus. That's what you have to have, these experiences, before you can call yourself an apostle. You got to be an eyewitness. Then you got to have miracles Sign and signs and wonders following you. All of you that don't have that, you out of order and you're perverted. Perversion means not to be what you ought to be. That is perversion. All you women that's trying to be like a man, you perverted. Like that perverted, funny hen on the barnyard. All right, here we go. You said, uh, what chapter? Uh... First Timothy, the second chapter, and uh, start at the ninth verse. And then we will conclude at the 15th verse. The uh, feminist movement hate Paul. The homosexuals hate Paul. Uh-huh. They're talking about the culture at that time. The Bible is not confined to a particular culture. The Bible is universal and is without end. It's not boxed in. It is universal. And, and so the ninth well, the caption says, Guidelines for Women. Guidelines <laughs> for, for, for Women. All right? It says this, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel that is not to the extreme, not too tight coming to church, not sh too short, and not your shoulders out. That's what you call a Corinthian whore. The women who wore their shoulders out, that means when the men come to Corinth, which was a decadent, wicked society, they would be standing on the corner and they have their shoulders out. That means we are available. 
All right, Joel Osteen, his wife, got her shoulders out and some others, shoulders out, legs out, everything out. In like manner, also, the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, not to the extreme, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Why? Because it takes the attention from the service of the preacher because people are so busy. First of all, they would come in with all this noise. They had so much on the head or in the hair like gold, pearls, costly array. They ding ling ling coming in the church. Nobody can get in the service. So are you saying that women who wear church hats well, and if it's too are much glamorous and some of it is too much. Because mommy it, was she wore the baddest hats. Yeah, and but her glamorous was, and Yeah, but it very... did, it was not ostentatious. Okay. You see, but I think ostentation is when you going too much. I've seen women, the hat was so long, I mean so high, somebody sitting behind them couldn't see. They'd be... <laughs> <laughs> now, the Bible said a woman should have her head covered, and that's why they do that. But yeah. you can go to the extreme. Now, my wife was, everybody know her for not being ostentatious, but she was well-dressed but not ostentatious, all right? Now watch this. This is another bad, hard one. For which becometh women professing ho godliness with good works. I know they don't want to hear it, but it's still in the Bible. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Go to your husband. Ask him certain questions. Don't bust out in the church and just disrupt the order. And they would, um, the man would be on one side, the women would be on another side. And if they had a discussion at home, the wife had a discussion at home and seemed not to be correct, then if she find out that what she said was correct, she would even get up and say, I told you. <laughs> Disrupting. So Paul said, if you have any questions, go home and learn it from your husband. Then also in the church, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Don't be disruptive. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Teaching is an authority. A teacher, rather, is an authority. Nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. In other words, control yourself. Don't teach men. Usurp means to steal or to take that which is not yours to have. We got women teaching men, women pastors, out of order, perverted. And watch what Paul says. He goes back to the beginning. For Adam was the first form. You can't change that. Then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. 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 Adam, Adam, Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. You can't change that. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Then, of course, in 
the second chapter of First Timothy, but I want to get to this Titus. Then we're going to get into uh, the culture, and also we want to deal with what is, what's going on now. All right? Now, in Titus, it says, qualification of ministers. That's the captain. If any... What chapter? That's Titus, I'm sorry. The uh, first chapter of Titus. And the first verse? Yeah, first chapter of Titus and started the sixth verse. And uh, the, the fact that God called the elders in every city. Let me look this up right now. I had it. And uh, in every city, you appoint elders. Now, we establish elders with Moses find 70 men of the elders of the elders that's in the congregation and appoint them to be pastors or leaders in every every city or every town I'm trying to see. All right. Let's All right. Let's see this uh, sixth verse. If any be blameless, the husband, the husband of one wife, not a polygamist, and not, certainly not a bigamist. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, boy, for a bishop, for a bishop, a bishop, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-will, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a good, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, and temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Now we can get into that, but uh, if a man desire the office of a bishop, a bishop, all right, a bishop might must be blameless and the husband of one wife that's going back to the to first timothy the third chapter then i'm going to close with that oh church leaders under that caption church leaders third chapter of First Timothy, qualification for church leaders. This is a true saying. If a man, I know we've been hearing that forever. The Bible don't change. You know what? Noah preached the same message 120 years. You know when we should stop using this scripture? is when women take the collars off. When women get out of the robes trying to preach 
squalling, jumping all over the place. Voice then change. When women get back into their authentic, let's say, authentic reason, they were born. Now hear what the Bible says. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. He said a bishop. If a man, men, listen, only. Men only. And then, you know, there is a litany of martyrs. Not one woman was a martyr. Not one. Mm. This is a true saying. If a man, men only, if a man desired the office of a bishop, he, desire, he desired a good work. A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, and good behavior, giving or uh, good behavior given to hospitality, apt to teach. The point is men only. You can try to twist it all you want, but the word of God is established. God said. To Moses, get 70 men. He didn't call one woman. 70 men. And I will put the spirit, Moses, your spirit, on these men. You can't say that to a woman. You're going to put the spirit of Moses on the women? No. 70 men. All right. I think I made my biblical point. <laughs> now let's get to the uh, practical stuff about women. Let's say you have men that, let's say, football. They do not let women play football with these strong men because the weaker vessel, y'all know the Bible, the weaker ve vessel, the woman is the weaker vessel. What does it look like a woman out there playing f football? I heard of one woman was playing football and, and uh, I haven't heard anything else from her. She must have got tackled and she had an epiphany, a reality that she is not to play football against men. And let's go to basketball. You have basketball, men basketball. Michael Jordan, all these guys, and the way they fight out there on the basketball court, you don't want to be out there and you're out of order to try to be out there. They have women basketball team. Then let's keep on going. What about uh, boxing? You would not put a woman in the ring with Mike Tyson. There has been a few um, women who challenged a few men, mm -hmm. they thought, you know, they had a chance. Well, that's like that hen. You see, you out of order. Now, I, I heard of a lady, she was really good. And she, that's an exception. She played basketball, but it's not like football where you're going to be tackled. She was ex, she was a wonderful she was tall. I think she was six, six, six or something. Like that. That's tall for a woman. And she was good. But that is a rarity. It is 
uh, an exception. When you see one of anything against 12 or more, the one is the exception. But it's not the rule. The rule is that women, they play against women. And men should play against men. And men and should stop play. invading women's spaces. Like how these uh, trans yeah. women who are actually men, they're coming into women's sports so that they can win and win trophies because it's easier. That's unfair. It's not right. Stay, no, it's not stay right. Stay in men's places. Men only. He's still a man. Exactly. And he should not be playing against women. That's not fair. Exactly. And so we got the trans <laughs> men like, always. Like uh, Joe Biden want to make uh, uh, Easter trans uh, identity or uh, he wants to promote that. Right. I think the issue with, I know with my generation, um, millennials and, and younger, um, there is a feminization of men. Yeah. And, you know, women, and it's because, you know, there is this, uh, there's always the pendulum that swings. Mm -hmm. And when feminists or when women, you know, started the feminist movement and, you know, and it got to a radical um, state, it kind of I don't know. It's like as the more masculine women became, the more feminine men became. And it's like the um, this generation and younger, it's a lot of feminized men. It's a lot of feminized men. You know. So um, what is yeah. the traditional role of a man? A man is supposed to bring stability, security, protection, and provision. That's right. You're supposed to be masculine and be able to provide protect and um you know be someone who is dependable and um a lot of women you know they've taken this feminist movement way too far and they're at a point where there's this thing called 4b yeah you ever heard of it no i never heard of it so it's a movement that started in korea um where there's a huge number of women who are just opting out of marriage, relationships altogether with men, um, having children, uh, families, and they're just focusing on themselves and, mm. and their career. And we're seeing the results of it, and um, it's not looking good. You know, no. they're, when you get older and... You're, you know, you don't have any children to take care of you like the traditional Asian culture. You, you, your children take care of the elderly um, and they don't have that. So now there's an influx of um, nursing homes and like, you know, mm. elderly homes mm -hmm. and it's nothing but women. Wow. Wow. It's a lot of women. Yeah. Just, yeah. And on that note, I had a young man to call me, what was it, yesterday or today? Anyway, the young man called me, and he said to me, he said, he called me Rev. He said, Reverend, I was angry with you. I was angry with you. But since I had this epiphany, and I sort of, I was sensitive because this young man told me a story that it, it just touched my heart. He said that he was molested starting at five years old. His brother molested him. His uncle molested him. Now really what knocked me, I mean, knocked me almost to the floor. 
He said, my daddy molested me. Then he yeah. said something else. He said, my mother knew it. Mm. In other words, he did not want to be what he was, but he was violated and the DNA, the DNA, he had new DNA because whenever somebody molests them or have sex with, uh, they change just the DNA. Now, my friend, Dr. Bolton, told me that. And so I had this feeling of sympathy or uh, feeling that this young man he said now he's 49, he'll be 50. But after hearing me, I guess he heard the, the sensitive side of me. And he said that God came in his life. He said, I was going in the direction of becoming a woman. He said, I had long hair. I had rings in my ear. He said, I was on my way. He said, but I didn't have the operation, but he was heading in that direction until he heard the word. Then he told me, he said, I cut my hair off. I pulled the earrings out of my ears. I am delivered. He did say he struggled, and I told him, victory is progress unhindered. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You're going to make it. God's going to help you. He will move in you and work in you to will and to do. But his conversation to me made me most sensitive to the homosexuals that did not want to go that way. But they were molested. Can you imagine? At five years old. Mm. A lot of them were. Yes. Statistically, yeah. They don't want to, go they don't want to admit it, but yeah. And a so lot of them were touched. He was, he was, he was, uh, let's say, he was dealing with his homosexuality, but not comfortable. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to be that way. Because it's, it's unnatural. unnatural. That's it. Unnatural. But unnatural. my attitude now is more uh, with more sensitivity and to preach the gospel with love. Because Jesus died for them too. So the young man, he he said, I got to apologize to you. It's because I was angry with you. But now he said, I understand. He, so he's been delivered <laughs> oh, Lord. from that spirit of homosexuality. So I thought I'd throw that in there because uh, you're right that the world, the devil trying to but it's not, feminize. Yeah. And, and emasculate. Even, yes. Even if not going to that extreme of homosexuality, just the way the household is functioning nowadays, a lot of men are 50-50 men. Oh, Lord. You'll be surprised that. I'm let, you. Let, let me throw There's that. There's a lot of 50 50 I, I men know, out there. But that's not, listen, when I met your mother, I took on all of her responsibilities and I paid all her bills. And she never had to go out to work because I was the provider. Mm -hmm. Not 50 50, it was 100% me. Because she was 100% her in her role. In her role, yes. All right? Yeah. So, you know, I thought about in the garden when God pronounced the judgment upon 
Adam and upon Eve that uh, by the sweat of your eyebrow, talking to the man, talking to Adam, he didn't say that to Eve. All right. So with you, you know, I love you, and but I, it came to me, the reason why women don't feel comfortable on a job, like your mother, she was smart. She ran the credit union uh, at, uh, uh, what's that, Kennedy Space? Something else they call it now. Anyway. Lockheed Martin? Yeah, she ran the credit unions. My wife was so perspicacious, and she was something else, mentally keen. Can almost do anything. She make things happen for me at home. While I go out, and I make the living to bring that stability, mm -hmm. security, protection, and provision. So when somebody, a man comes to a woman, I had to rebuke a guy one time. Man comes to a woman, and say, "Hey, what you bring to the table?" Yeah, that's the mean? thing now, Dad. Yeah, what you bring to what the table. What do you table. bring to the table? A woman? Can you cook? Can you clean? Yeah. I and mean, then they expect for you to do all of the wifely duties and be make money. before becoming a wife. Well. Like yeah. all the wifely duties? Well, the whole thing <laughs> is that she's supposed to do what she's supposed to do. She's supposed to be a homemaker. And you need to provide the home. That's what for I'm me saying. To make. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that, uh, yeah, this thing. What I'm saying is that there is the role for the man. Mm -hmm. And the role for the wife, she is supposed to be the homemaker. Keyword wife. Right. She's supposed to be the wife. And there's a, a scripture that says that. She's supposed to be a home maker, taking care of her children. And she got enough being a woman. And so you gonna put on her. To work. You gotta you work. Got, you gotta do the house. And then half of the you gotta you're responsible for half of the bills. <laughs> you um have to cook, you have to clean, and you have to satisfy the man. Yeah. That's too too much. See what happens when you make the wife a uh, let's say fifty fifty. Yeah. That means you have a husband. A roommate. The husband got a got a husband because you created a husband. Yeah. If she got to do it fifty fifty, oh no, that's not biblical. God told Adam to make the living. By the sweat of his eyebrow. And then the woman's supposed to be there as a help of me. Yeah. She's supposed to comfort him and give him support. But to make your wife go out to listen, y'all wrong. <laughs> Anybody talking about 50-50, yeah. you're wrong. I had a brother one time, I'm not going to call his name. He said, uh, you know, he's getting ready to get married. I told her that if she want to live a certain way, she got to bring something to the table to help us live that kind of way. I stopped him. I said, listen, you supposed to provide for your wife. Don't make her feel that she has to bring something to the table as far as 50-50. I said, you're wrong. And you know what? He took my advice. And he went and bought his wife. Well, they living in a nice house that he pays for. Yeah. He went and bought her a nice uh, truck. He was so happy to show it off. And he never brought that situation to his wife. Mm-hmm. See, you know, see, a, a, a woman's supposed to leave the uh, the 
her, I mean, the, the, father's, the father, house. father's house, she's been taken care of by the father. So the husband got to take over the position that the father had. See, so so this 50, 50, 50 stuff is not biblical. Right. No, it's not biblical. You know, I heard a man in uh, Memphis, older gentleman, he was so good talking about it. He said, he said, my wife, he said, when I take her shopping, he said, she don't have a budget. Mm. <laughs> she, he said... And then he said, uh, sometime at night, he before she come to bed, speak up. He puts he puts a nice piece of money under the pillow. <laughs> yeah. What generation is this? Oh, he, he's a little he's a little older than me, but he puts he said he puts some money under the pillow. Yeah. So when she makes up the bed and all, she see that money. I know that's right. See, and some, <laughs> some other things he said, I'm not going to say it, but he said it was like uh, uh, aphrodisiac. It was something that would uh, cause her to feel more willing. Yeah, you to, gotta be inspired. To bless him. She was, and he said, when I take her shopping, he said, she don't have a budget. Mm. Yeah. That's music to my ears. I know. But um, Pontiac 77 gave a scripture um, pertaining to what's happening today. Um, Isaiah 4 and 1. And it says, let me, let me show it here. It says, And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying... We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our Shame. reproach. Yeah, a reproach, which means to be brought down. And it's almost equivalent to shame. Uh -huh. Because that is what's going on, is that I don't need your money. Uh -huh. I don't need your house. I got my own money. I got my own house. I got my own car. I got my own That's what this we, and that. And I that. hear that all the time. So would you elaborate on that attitude oh my of independence? It's, I don't understand it. And that's why so many women are so miserable because they want to take on so much. That's unnatural. We're not supposed to be working to the bone and and then also having to take care of the house, take yeah. care of the bill, like that's just too that's too much. That's too and much. see, uh, <laughs> how many how many women going after one man? Seven after one. And it's like that today. It is like that. <laughs> it is like that. And these brothers taking advantage of that. They are. They are. Yeah, they take advantage of that. And and the women who are too desperate, yes, they fall into that trap. I don't understand that, and they think that it's attractive to real men to say, "Oh, I have my own car, I got my own house, I got everything on my own, I make six figures, blah blah blah, rah rah rah." And the whole time he's just like, "That's so unattractive." Right. I don't. I don't care. Uh, I hear a lot of men that say, I don't care if she work at McDonald's. As long as she's peaceful and right. she's, you know, mm -hmm. she handled the home, handled her business, make sure my house is peaceful, clean, she can cook, you know, and satisfy me. That's all I care for. Right. Like, they don't care how much money you make because at the end of the day, women are hypergamous anyway. Mm -hmm. We feel some type of way when we are taking care of the house, right, like the bills right, of the right. house. Regardless of what a woman says, she can say she got everything. Right. But when you're but with you a, don't man, have a man, yeah, exactly. See, and when she do get a man, the man is dusty. 
because he, <laughs> because he he maybe that it, any man that finds that attractive to me, I feel like you're dusty. Like yeah. you just wanna you're you're he's a hobo, a, he, he's a, hobo a hobo sexual. sexual. That's what he like. Is. You need a place to stay. And he's a he's a bull weevil looking for a home. <laughs> All right. A what? A bull weevil <laughs> looking for a home. <laughs> now listen. A man need to feel needed. Yes. If he don't feel needed, he feels obsolete. Mm -hmm. So a man need to feel needed. Your mother made me feel needed. Mm -hmm. All right. I felt my fullness as a man. Because she showed me her vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And because of that. And you couldn't go nowhere. You had us uh, crumb snatchers. Oh, yeah. We yeah. were about to. What? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ball and chain. <laughs> Ball and chain. 30 years of hard feed, labor. You had to feed us. <laughs> <laughs> or else. <laughs> but one thing about my wife was like the proverb. 31, she was industrious at home. Mm -hmm. She wasn't just sitting around, but she felt her natural, uh, let's say, her natural isness mm -hmm. being a housewife. Mm -hmm. She felt more natural being a housewife. And I never made her feel like, child, if you don't go out and get a job. <laughs> This shit going. I don't going. know how we going to eat. Yeah, I don't know how we going to make it. <laughs> and the, the But when times, if you ever came, you know, across some hard times, she was. Oh, yes, yeah, she, she was there. She had it. She was a proverb 30, uh, 31 woman. Because woman. Yeah. I never would believe when things got a little tight with me, that girl, some kind of way. She made would, it happen. She'll make something happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even if she have to. It would touch me is, is when she was doing the uh, insurance adjusting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would go with her for protection. And she would, I mean, do the job, made money. Mm-hmm. And I was not intimidated because I know that was not her role. It just, she was a helper me. She was helping me. Mm -hmm. But I never told her, child, if you don't go find a job. This got to work. Yeah, this got to work. <laughs> if, if this don't work, we are, well, we are done, all right? <laughs> no, I <laughs> The Lord always made a way mm -hmm. for me. Like that time, uh, my wife came. She didn't. She didn't go to God. She came to me, and I went to God. Mm -hmm. She came to me and said, uh, "She said, baby, we don't have no money." I said, "What?" She said, "We don't have no money." I got on this same YouTube, and I told the people. I said I need I need three thousand dollars like yesterday. Mm. And when I looked around, this secret disciple sent us three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And he did it for nine months. God was proving to me, I got you. Mm -hmm. And I I was like when I got the check, I just threw it on the table. Bam! <laughs> look at God. I said, look at God. And that man said to me, then we had another bill for $6,000. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to tell me. She always tried to keep things from me. She said, she called me William. I said, William, I forgot. I mean, I, don't want, I didn't want to tell you, but we have a bill for $6,000. I put that on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. I said, I need $6,000. The man sent me $6,000. Mm. 
I needed a new camera because he didn't like the way they did me. He bought that, a $3,000 camera. I needed some tires for my car that my wife went out and and got that car because I told her I need a car because mm-hmm. my car had stopped. And because of her prayers and her wifely duties to be a support, I was able to go through. Mm-hmm. So he that finds the wife finds the good thing. Now, the man must bring 100% to the table. In order for a woman to feel secure. Right. Innately, she's not, she don't, she, she go to work because she have to. But really, her real natural feeling is to be home. Mm-hmm. And that's all your mother wanted to do is to be a good wife, a good mother, and she was the cleanest woman. Mm-hmm. You're talking about clean. Yeah. We used to, I used OCD. to say, oh my God, I said she cleaned the clean. <laughs> she know? bleached the bleach. She bleached the bleach, I'm telling <laughs> And when, uh, when you had guests coming over, Oh. I feel like leaving town because she's going to work you to death. <laughs> and sometimes she tell me to leave. Go somewhere. Because I don't want you around here. I'm messing up where I just cleaned up. I, just, I said, all right, good. I'm gone. You know? So uh, this day in which we live, some women have had good husbands, but because of that independent spirit. I don't need you. Mm -hmm. I know a lady, see, oh my God, that lady had me laughing. She was giving her fiance a hard way to go. He goes to see her and she just ignores him, go hang up with the family and what have you. And so they broke up and she came home one day. She had an epiphany. She came home one day, looked at this big house, no man. Cars, two, three cars, but no man. Money in the bank, but no man. She said, I'm getting on this plane, the next plane, and I'm going to get my man. Mm-hmm. See, because he's the best thing ever happened to me. She got on the plane and went to the church where he was attending. He didn't know she was coming. And she said to him, I come to get my man. See, now she understood that having all this stuff and relationship is the meaning of life. If you don't have yeah. a relationship, you're not living. Yeah. You're not supposed to be taciturn. Uh, you're not supposed to be xenophobic and all that kind of stuff. You're supposed to have a relationship. Mm-hmm. And I just told somebody the other day, you let your past experiences come into your present and aboard your future. Right. And all you're doing is working, working, working to work, not living. You're just working. Mm -hmm. And you need somebody to share that with. Right. And I said, don't let your past come into your present and aboard your future. So you can be hooked up to a hitching post in life. Life is not a hitching post is a progressive revelation that you got to experience as you go. So I wanted to come on tonight, and I think I finished talking about you can't get in the ring with Mike Tyson because men only. <laughs> you can't play basketball with Michael Jordan, men only. You can't... Uh, what else? You can't... I'm thinking about some other things. 
because uh, it's men on. You can't go to the men's room. <laughs> I don't understand why women like to do these masculine jobs like construction working. And, yeah, Lord. Uh, going to war. I don't know. <laughs> uh, see, they want to, you know, I saw a lady. Oil she, rig. She, yeah, oil rig. No, I, I like to be dainty. I like to be protected and provided for. I like to be I pampered. Saw, I saw my wife used to love to look at the Alaska, that program. And yeah. they had a lady on there. That lady was just as strong as a man. Right. She could, I mean, she could, listen, she could shoot too. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was something else. And you would think that she had a man around. Nah, she didn't need no man. She, need, she really didn't need no man. No, not that lady. No. <laughs> Just like that lady want to help me <laughs> off the roof. She said, I got you, Rev. Oh, the, uh, the lesbian yeah, couple? She, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't care I, what she was at that time. <laughs> Get me you off the roof. You needed her. I needed her. I needed a woman at that time. <laughs> you needed a woman, yeah, a real a woman. A real woman. A real masculine uh, woman. Yeah, I needed her. A strong woman. Yeah, strong. <laughs> Just like that man. You remember... Uh, Mrs. Dalfire. Mrs. Dalfire. <laughs> my, my favorite. My, Just my, the way God makes you. Yeah, my favorite Natural. scene is that he, Robin Williams, he had hair on his leg. Oh, I want to also say that anatomically, a man is different from a woman. And all, men only, hairs on your chest. Mm -hmm. Mustache and beard, men only. Nope, Dad. I'm gonna show you something later. I seen a whole woman waxing her beard, <laughs> but it's like a. I think it's a circus. A, a, the, no, I think there's there's a a condition. That's happening now. I don't know if it's in the food or what, but there's women who are like they can naturally just grow a beard. What about on the chest? Chest too. It's called PCOS or something wow. like that. It's a real thing. But they can't do some other things though. No. All right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, Mrs. Dolphire. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Williams, he got hairy legs and all this, so he had his stockings on, and the stockings fell down. The bus driver, he, he looked back he at that hairy for, leg. Yeah, he looking, he looking for a date. He said, you know, you know, these winter nights, it gets cold. It gets, uh, he needs somebody to warm him up, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, when, and when he saw. Mrs. Dalfire, the uh, stockings was coming down, and he saw her her knees, and he said, "You know, I like them strong." <laughs> said, "I like them natural." Yeah, he said, "I like them natural." Just the way God made. Just you. the way God made you. <laughs> I can't. That was so funny. Anyway, so our discussion tonight, I think that we made some good points and uh, there's some things that women cannot do and shouldn't try to do mm -hmm. and our brothers we have to come to the table 100% mm -hmm. and I really don't feel good when my daughters have to go out there and fend for themselves nah, I'm good I'll be good yeah <laughs> No, I want to. I want you to have a man. No, that's what I mean. Huh? I'll be good. Oh, you got somebody in line? I'm not gonna talk about it on this live. Oh, but... poor fella. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, poor fella. I like to be pampered. Yeah. Go ahead. What else? I like to be protected. Right. If I have a, a, I am the ultimate damsel in distress. 
Yeah. Okay. Good. good. So if something happens, I I know who to call because right. I know that they're gonna stop everything and do it for me. I think I I think I have an idea. You be quiet. Yeah, I'm gonna be quiet, <laughs> poor fella. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, single. It, I'm single I'm single because I don't have a ring but mm -hmm. you know it's coming yeah hmm. uh oh it's coming praise God I want the best for you I want them to be able <laughs> to do what your father did yeah that's right so I gotta do some vetting when I meet him Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you work? <laughs> <laughs> you heard me. Do you have a job? Do you have a job? Yeah. And I'm not talking about the book, book of Job. Book of Job. But talking about a job. I'm talking about a job. So you can bring stability, <laughs> security, protection, <laughs> and provision. And if you don't have a job, my brother, you understand? Yeah, your love gives such a thrill, but your love oh, don't pay you know. these bills. Not we at all. need some money. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm hungry. I can't eat ramen noodles all day. No, no. I didn't feed y'all ramen noodles. <laughs> no, no. Well, Pontiac said, huh? Pontiac said, poor fella, I feel so sorry. <laughs> He'll be all right. Hey. Y'all just keep him yeah. in your prayers. <laughs> I know. Y'all just keep him in I your know. prayers. I'm telling you, I, I know a guy was crying one time when <laughs> I went over to the house. He said, please pray for me. <laughs> I pat him on the back. I said, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. Just hang in there. <laughs> But we just need men, women, we need to come together. Men are, there's a, a group, there's this men empowerment thing that's happening, which I do agree that men are being, you know, beat up on a lot. Um, but the, they're doing, they're, it's like they, um, they get a kick out of just pointing out every flaw oh. of a woman but when we try to explain like what it is that we need so that we can feel secure, we can because we've been cooking, we've been cleaning as girlfriends and nobody everybody's scared to get married, everybody's scared to move forward in life. Everyone's afraid um to commit and to trust um, because of the way society is right now. And it's like, we have to be able to communicate. Mm -hmm. At least we have to start with communication mm -hmm. and, and move forward from there mm -hmm. and have an understanding. And, you know, the pendulum is swinging mm -hmm. and it's, it's kind of just getting out of hand right now because you, you have some men who are just completely jaded when it comes down to women mm -hmm. and you have women who are completely jaded to the point where they just like I don't I don't care don't about human bothered, touch right, right. I don't want to be bothered I I you know when they hear a story like the story about the the lady who on TikTok who said who did I marry um the guy was lying about everything and pretending that mm. he was talking to someone on the phone, like that type of, yeah, like he would pretend to have conversations on the phone, yeah, and there will be nobody on the phone, wow, like that kind of. Thing. Wow. <laughs> he lied and said he was the CEO yeah. of a company, and I think I told you about yeah. it, yeah, yeah. And so that went viral. So that's another. That's like you know adding flames to the fire and fueling the fire and you already have women skeptical of every man 
And you have men who are skeptical of every woman because they hear about the horror stories of what yeah. women have done to yeah. men and how they do this and how they take everything when you when they divorce you and they're right. the ones that. Right. And then you know you you better get a DNA test at mm-hmm. birth because yeah. you know it's it, like it there's don't want so your legs much to fall off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so much going on. It's a lot of this going on. It's a lot. Yeah. And then women saying, okay, 4B it is. I'm going to take on the Korean 4B culture and just completely write off men altogether. And that is so that's sad. That's sad. That is and sad. And then you have men who are um, what they call incels. You know, incel? Yeah, an incel. What is that? That's an involuntary, involuntary celibate. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, I see. You have men that are literally like going, they don't, they don't even know what to do. Mm. They don't even know what to do. So they it's sad. To be celibate. No, it's involuntary. involuntary. Like they don't want to right. be celibate, but they but don't know how afraid. to go about yeah. getting the type of woman that may be attracted to them. It's a lot of. It's yeah, a lot. You know, I'm going through that right now. I mean, I'd like to have companionship. Yeah. Let's not talk about your personal stuff. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, I thought we was family on this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, Friday, we're going to be talking about uh, for women, for women only. And I got some uh, information to help women do the vetting. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be interesting because uh, it was written by a woman. And uh, so we're going to share that on, what's the night? This is Wednesday. We'll do it Friday. Yeah. And uh, have another discussion for women only. Okay. You got to be fair, you know? So the brother's going to hear uh what women desire and what we should bring to her mm-hmm. and this fear thing is real because both men and yeah. women have been uh let's say bamboozled uh fooled mm-hmm. you thought that the person was the one for you and then you find out that they have all these hang ups and they they're abusive. Uh, they they haven't really matured, and they're still childish. And oh, there's so many things that can come out after you say "I do." Mm-hmm. So it's good to be cautious, but I I think it's paralysis of high purpose when you don't find a relationship, mm-hmm. and you're not getting any younger. Yeah. You see, you're not getting any younger, so. You want to pray, and God will put the right person in your life. You got to acknowledge Him, and God is a giver of good gifts. If you ask for an egg, He will not give you a scorpion. If you ask for bread, He will not give you stone. Do not be independent of God. You're not mm-hmm. existential. You are dependent. You are inertia. You need outside help. You need a relationship. And believe me, God will put the right person in your life. Mm -hmm. And the right one will enhance your life. But the wrong one will diminish Diminish your life. life. Mm -hmm. So thank God for God's direction. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Now, if you go out with a young man and you feel uncomfortable, your left eye is moving. Yeah. And it's moving while you're there. That's a sign. That's a sign you need to get up and get on out of there. Because your body will yeah. will let you know. Yeah. You know, I talked about the thalamus. Mm-hmm. The thalamus will say that some people do not listen. Mm-hmm. But the thalamus is telling you that's not the one, you know. Mm-hmm. And your belly, you know, that yeah. you say, oh, I just don't feel right. That's mm-hmm. your thalamus 
telling you yeah. it's not the right one. And you got to have courage enough to face that reality. Right. And not be so so uh, desperate. Yeah. Oh, I Never just, that. I, I, need, I just need somebody. I just, oh, Lord. How long, Lord? How long? <laughs> <laughs> Where he at, Lord? Yeah, where he at, Lord? <laughs> send him, Lord. Send him, Lord. <laughs> Jesus, send him. You know, you don't want to get that way. Yeah. But I do feel sorry. I know a guy that he's looking at um, the dating thing on, um, you know, the dating, online dating and whatever. The apps? Yeah. And everybody that was on there, was in need of some help. <laughs> no, there men do need to be cautious because yeah. there are a lot of trifling women out there that only like will go on a date. They go on a lot of first dates so that they can eat. <laughs> what? Go on first dates so they can They're eat? They're foodie dates. Is that right? Yeah, that's what it's called, foodie dates. Boy, that's sad. You got to go out you and gotta, to get a meal. Yeah. Uh, you got to go on a date to to be fed. No, nah, I don't. I, that's terrible. Yeah. That's terrible. You got to go on a date because you want to go out on a date, yeah. not to eat. Yeah. I mean, the man trying to talk to you. <laughs> you <laughs> just... There's a video. There's a video of a girl that did exactly that. No. But the what? guy, he was smart enough to realize that, you know, <laughs> she she wasn't feeling him. She sat there and ate a hundred oysters. A hundred oysters? Yes. <laughs> and recorded herself. She was recording herself eating the oysters. You know, oysters are dangerous in a certain times of the year. Yeah, yeah, I know. No, but I don't fool with oysters, that man got That man got up. And left her with the bill. With the bill. As he should, because <laughs> she was so disrespectful. And the man trying to have a conversation, uh -huh. and she just slurped, slurping up the oysters. <laughs> One she oyster at a time, 100. Oh, that bill got to be. It that was. was. astronomical. And yeah. then she had a nerve to post it. I was just like. Oh, did she get a lot of hits? Yeah, a lot of, yeah, it was, it went viral. Oh, all right. For the wrong reason. For the wrong reason. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to say about this uh, modern? Yeah, men, women, we just need to do better. Yeah. The the, the millennial generation, uh, Gen X, Gen Z, whatever generation, it just we need to get it together. Yeah. We're we're not enemies. We're supposed to work together. Now you would you would think that uh, the church would be the place because that's why I got your your mother from the church. Yeah. Church of God in Christ, and uh, they were trained. The women were trained to be good wives, mm -hmm. and I thank God. But your grandmother, she taught your mother, and Lord, mm -hmm. it was a blessing. I still don't know how to make up the bed like she did. No, yeah. Especially the sheet, the bottom sheet. I know how to do that. I don't know how to fold it. Yeah, you're not going to know how to fold it. That's a secret? I know how to fold it. My grandbaby know how to fold it. Exactly. Because uh, I Jeanette? taught her how to fold it. Uh, and her grandma oh, taught her Oh, she could fold. fold some clothes. I mm -hmm. said, girl, you're going to make a good wife after a while. And she's such a... <laughs> She's such a beautiful baby. Yeah. Yeah. So you training her right. Mm -hmm. She can cook too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure can. Well, all right. I think we had a good discussion. Anything else you'd like to? You were saying it's a shame that uh, something about the church we can't find. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Mary, you yeah. can't find people well, in the church. Well, I believe you can find somebody in the church, but I'm trying to deal with the women who wants to be pastors and bishops. I don't want no bishop. And my only bishop going to be in my house is me. <laughs> you know, this uh, egalitarianism, feminist movement have infiltrated the church mm -hmm. where I know, I'm not calling his name, but he married a, a woman because he was looking at 
the fact that she's in the church and lips and hips, you know, like he's at Kentucky Fried Chicken. I take two breasts and two legs and all that kind of stuff. And he found out that later on, <clears throat> the lady said God called her to preach. Mm. That's not scripture. And so instead of being home with him and giving him the loving uh, that she supposed to, I'm talking about being the wife, mm -hmm. she want to go out and preach. Yeah. I, I can't take that. The house looking like sin, dip, confusion, and yet you want to do go to, to do a woman's conference. <laughs> you need to have a conference at yeah, the that, house. In that laundry room. And that laundry and get them roaches <laughs> out of there. Let's run, <laughs> let's run that kind of revival. <laughs> You know what I mean? A raid con the revival. Shh. I'm going to tell my side of why it's hard to find um, a person in the church. I'll talk about that on, on Friday. All right. All right. Because well, you, you already you, know what, what gotta, I think about that. You got to be involved. And God got some good gifts. God got the right people. You see? And uh, like I said, I got your mother out of the church. Yeah, that was a different time, Dad. Well, my wife was forever, whatever time, you know. <laughs> they don't make uh, men like you, and they don't make, well, she made me, but. But God is the maker. See, they don't that's make why. Men the, like you, the, 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 the part is house, the house of God. All right, the part is how he will make uh, the right person for you, uh, a designer original for God. Brother Elliot just said what I was thinking. What, church, what is you, a, uh, church is a masquerade ball. Not all churches. <laughs> not all. Yeah, what church y'all been going to? That. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> It's a masquerade ball. In some, some churches. Yeah, some churches. You got to be careful where you go to pick what you want because every church is not spirit-filled and doctrinally sound. You got to find somebody that, that is really spiritual mm -hmm. and not, you know, uh, you got two people in them and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you, you don't know. I, I got you should do church there. reviews, like, you know what I mean? To see what church. Is. Yeah, which church? What what's a good church to go to? Or, yeah, people you know be I mean? asking me. Yeah. They said, "What kind of church?" You should do church reviews. Yeah, on, the one on these man churches. asked me. He said, uh, "And some women on my program." Yeah. They said, "Bishop, what church uh, do you recommend?" Do you recommend? I said, "I don't know." No. The only one I know is uh, Craig Lewis. Yeah, that's the Dallas. number one church. If you live in Dallas, yeah, Pastor G. Craig Lewis Church is the the number one church. Because I don't want to send you the one to a church where the the woman is in charge of the of the man. She tells him everything. She mm -hmm. tell him, "Well, I'm preaching this Sunday." Praise the Lord. Hey, praise the Lord. <laughs> and uh, I may let you preach next Sunday. Mm -hmm. If the Lord say so. <laughs> yeah, we should do church reviews. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All right, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you tonight. Um, don't forget to like the the channel. Like, I mean, the video. Um, the more likes we get, the more the algorithm will work in our favor and we'll have more, um, more of a broader audience. So let's work the algorithm, work together. It's free to like and share and to subscribe. And also um, the t-shirts. Yes. You can pre-order now. Just go to shop7000club.com. Hurry up and get them um, so you can, you know, get the size that you want and need. It's Sin Makes You Stupid. We have it in white and we also have them in black. So definitely go to shop7000club.com 
and order your t-shirts today all right and then also the hoodies they're on sale um so the sin make you stupid hoodies the ones that we do have left they are on sale for um what is it $35.99 or $34.99 and the it was reported to me hoodies um they're on sale for $29.99 so go ahead and order those now um, you'll have them available and ready for, you know, when it gets cool again, or if it's still cool for you, wherever you're located. Um, definitely a great, uh, piece of merch to have from the 7,000 Club and, and Bishop Carter. So, um, again, we have the books available. Mm -hmm. yes. And we have, um, people are loving, um, these books the classics too uh of course trouble in the barnyard this basically um was about what we touched on tonight um with the hand, hand pecked husband and the rooster pet wife um so this is a really really good book trouble in the barnyard and then we have no apology necessary a really great book um when it comes down to race relations in America, um, the history of um, slavery. slavery and all that. So this is a classic, really, really good book. Um, no apology necessary. Right. And then the theology of the limp versus the theology of wholeness. This is um, also based off of the... Um, iconic or or what would, the famous uh sermon nice. <laughs> <laughs> infamous sermon <laughs> in uh, st louis, in uh, louis at the convocation yeah at the convocation and um it's really good it, it speaks on um you know wickedness in the church if you're a church grower if you're a preacher pastor minister you definitely want to have this book. It's really, really Excuses good. Excuses for sin and versus the uh, the victory over sin. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. So go ahead and grab the books as well. Um, but yeah, the t-shirts are available to order now. Okay. And um, also, once again, your bishop, he's not, he's a... He's a spring chicken now. <laughs> he got, I'm he got, funny. he got social media. Oh yes, oh yes. You know. Tell him what I have. You got Instagram. Uh huh. You got Facebook. Yes. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. And you got Ticket and Talk. Dun, 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 dun. Tic Tac Toe. Dun, dun, dun. Three in a row. <laughs> See, I can't squabble. But no, you um, <laughs> yeah, you bet not. But yeah. yes, go ahead and follow him on social media. Um, we have all of the links in the um, in the uh, description box below. Um, the first link, which is the linked, li what is it? Link tree. The link tree link. Mm -hmm. It will take you to everything. Um, it's a one stop shop. So. Um, you also have the PayPal there for offering and donations, um, and all of the Cash App Zelle information is also on the screen, but it's also listed in the description box below. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, thank you, Brother Elliot, for posting that. And of course, I got to do my roll call real quick. Thank you, Brother Elliot, Brother Haywood. Um, Sister Amelia, Sister Natalie, let's see, Sky Dancer 67. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, Sister Dupree, welcome. Um, let's see here, Sister Yvette, thank you, thank you. Let's see. TPLLC, thank you so much. Uh, Sister Shayla, thank you. Let's see here. 
I think I I think I got everybody who was in the chat tonight. Sister Dolores. Oh, oh, how can I forget Pontiac 77? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sister Leslie. Thank you, Sister Del Delia. Thank you. I hope I'm pronouncing names correctly. But thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all for all that you do in supporting the, the ministry. Um, we truly appreciate it. And let's see here. Okay, okay, okay. I think I got everybody. If I miss your name, I do apologize. Just know that you're loved and appreciated. And thank you so much. Um, but yeah, so the church announcements are complete. All right, all right. <laughs> Oh, uh, Sister Sabrenda, I see you in the chat. Thank you. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. And then, let's see. I think that's every, everybody I said. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Sister Darlene. Uh, okay, I see you, I see you. We done picked up some okay. more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We growing out here. Yeah. I'll see y'all. But yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. We truly appreciate you all. Don't forget Friday we're going to be uh, talking about women only. Women's. Is it women? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, if you are not saved, I want you to know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His son gave his life for our redemption. And if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. With the mouth confession is made, but with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and that is to do what's right. I want you to bow your heads now and say, Lord Jesus, I come this night. I'm a sinner, and I want to be saved. Forgive me for my many sins. Wash me in your precious blood. Save me now. I give you my life. And by your help, I will live for you. For the balance of my days. So help me, God. Listen, if you prayed that prayer in earnest, I want you to know your sins have been forgiven. That's the entry level now. You have to let God work in you. That anachronosis, that is regeneration and also renovation and normalcy. Let him do it. Let him work in you the willing to do. Find yourself a strong church that preaches the gospel and have sound doctrine. And the Lord will bless you to grow. Until then, this is your church. We got some people don't go to the physical church. They, they laughed at me about the YouTube, but Kovic, Bishop Kovic <laughs> came and put all of them on the YouTube or social media. So this is your church until you find a physical church. And there we on every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. I went on yesterday because I had a special situation and I was burning like Jeremiah, fire in my bones. All right, God bless you and God keep you is my prayer, but all wicked folk have, we're going to have that t-shirt too, all wicked folk have, have a bad, a bad day. day.
<laughs> How y'all like my assistant? She's the... What's assistant? Your, no, uh, tell me who you are. I'm her assistant. I, <laughs> I am. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. The senior director, uh -huh. chief executive officer uh -huh. of the Worldwide Ministry of 7000 Club. All right. Incorporated. Listen, incorporated. That's right. That's right. Praise you the Lord. All right. We'll see you Friday. We're going to be dealing with women only. Yes. 